Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today to learn more about Retin-A. And this video is a very interesting video because I'm going to be telling you some kind of controversial information about Retin-A just for your own information. It was something that really startled me, I have to admit. And it's something that we as Retin-A users or people who are considering using Retin-A really do need to know about. And if you're a 50 plus beauty or a 40 plus beauty or a 30 plus beauty interested in Retin-A and good skin care and good anti-aging tips, I'll be 60 in April. Ah, so anti-aging tips are pretty important to me. Then I hope you'll subscribe and click that little bell. That just notifies you of my future videos and also give me a thumbs up if you can because that helps my channel too. Okay, let's get down to this. Now, I debated about telling you about this and then I debated about how to tell you this, but how it came to be is that I had one of my lovely viewers and we've actually become friends and we email each other and she's really wonderful. Her name is Liz Smith and she emailed me and she said, are you aware about the controversy surrounding Retin-A? And I told her I wasn't, so she shared an article with me and I'll put a link to this blogger's article down below the description there so you can read what she has to say about Retin-A. But this particular beauty blogger decided not to use Retin-A any longer after reading one particular study. And after I read her article, I did some research online and I went to the journal of the AMA, the American Medical Association, to their dermatology journal and I found the study that she was referring to. And at first, after reading the study, I have to admit that I immediately thought I'm going to stop using Retin-A, but I do tend to do that. I tend to like, you know, go from zero to a hundred. And then when I really thought about it and let it sink in, I decided to continue using Retin-A, but to kind of change the way in which I use it. I wanted to bring this study to your attention so that you have all the information you need to make an informed choice about Retin-A. And here's a look at the study, and it is called the Topical Tretinoin Therapy and All-Cause Mortality Study. And what it is, and I'll try to explain this to you in layman's terms, it's a six-year study that started in 1998 and ended in 2004, and it was conducted on about 1,131 vets, military vets, and they were all around the age of 70, so they were older. However, with me being 60 in April, 70 is not that far off, so to me, those aren't elderly people. And the purpose of the study was originally to prove that topical use of Retin-A or Tretinoin would help be preventative against skin cancer. And it kind of makes sense. And in fact, my dermatologist even told me it was a good thing I was using Retin-A because it would prevent future skin cancers. And here's how they did the study. They took the about 1130 men, and I think there were a few women in the study, but it was primarily male veterans, but they divided them into two groups and they had one that was the Retin-A group and one that was the placebo group. And so in the first group, they gave them 1% Retin-A, which is the highest strength. I mean, it would basically rip your skin off if you're not used to it. And they had the study participants apply the Retin-A to their skin twice a day in the morning and the evening. They did it all over their face and also their ears because ears are an area that can get skin cancer. And in the second group, they also applied a cream, but it was an empty placebo cream. It did not have any Retin-A in it at all, but they applied the same cream twice a day. So then they started into the study and every six months they would go into the doctor and the doctor would evaluate how they were doing. Well, the study was supposed to last six years, but they actually ended the study six months early due to deaths in the tretinoin or the Retin-A group. The study ended up saying that the deaths weren't exactly attributable to Retin-A, that they did exist, and they did have to stop that study because there were more deaths in the Retin-A group, but the study's authors did not conclude that the deaths were directly attributable to the Retin-A use. And in the Retin-A group, there were 82 deaths versus only 53 deaths in the just placebo cream group. So as you can see, there was a more significant significant number of deaths, quite a few more deaths in the Retin-A group versus the non-Retin-A group. And the deaths were from several different causes, but primarily they were cardiac related, like heart attacks, that kind of thing, or they were related to small cancers of the lungs, lung cancer. And ironically, I was reading about lung cancer and vitamin A because tretinoin is a form of vitamin A. And there was an earlier study by different authors about lung cancer and vitamin A. And that study was supposed to show that giving people vitamin A would protect against lung cancer. And actually in that study, they found just the opposite that giving those people more vitamin A actually caused lung cancer. So I have to admit it was kind of odd to me that in this vitamin A derivative, this tretinoin, that lung cancer was something that was increased in the Retin-A group. But when all was said and done at the end of the study, the study's authors said, yes, there were more deaths in the Retin-A group, but it was not necessarily causative. In other words, the Retin-A did not necessarily cause the increased deaths. In fact, they said that they weren't caused by Retin-A. However, 
The study was underwritten by Johnson & Johnson, and those researchers were paid by Johnson & Johnson, which does manufacture Retin-A. So when I first heard about the study, I thought, I'm going to quit Retin-A, but I gave myself a few days to think about it, and I read some other information online, and I'll put some links to some of the articles that I read down below. But I realized after reading them that, number one, in this study, they use 1% Retin-A, which is much higher than I'm using. I'm at the 0.5%, which is 50% less strong. And I decided at that point that I would never go up to the 1% Retin-A just to be on the safe side. And also another thing about the men in the study, they use the 1% twice a day. And I only use the 0.5% once a day. So already I'm getting just one fourth the amount of tretinoin that those veterans in the study use. So I feel good about that. And I do have to say that my skin is looking a lot better due to Retin-A use. So I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater at this point and I'm just going to keep kind of monitoring things. And on my channel, if I hear other studies about Retin-A, good or bad, I will be sharing those with you because I think it's always important to know the scientific research on the products that we're putting into our body. And I will say, I don't want this video to alarm any of you, but I did want you to know about this so that you can make your own informed decision about what you feel the best path is for you. Now, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I'm going to this card deck, the Life Loves You cards by Louise Hay. And let's see what God has in store for us today. Okay. Ooh. I trust that life wants what's best for me. I just got this one. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and choose a card. This one feels good. Oh, I got this one too. I commit to being more present in my life. God is trying to give me a message, be present in my life and realize that life wants what's good for me. But also maybe he's telling me to take these cards out of the deck, which I will. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, I love this one. I am blessed. I am blessed. Take a few moments to count your blessings, friends. Complete this sentence 10 times. One way life is loving me right now is, whoo, that's easy that I have all of you. Oh, you guys, I'm so happy to have a YouTube channel and I'm so happy that all of you are my new friends out there. I am just so happy. One way life is loving me right now is the fact that you're there. That just means the world to me. I know I say that in a lot of comments that it means the world to me, but it, it really does. When I got to about my mid fifties and I realized this just yesterday because my sister is about 55 and she's saying to me, Beth, I just feel like life is over. All the fun stuff is behind. I have nothing to look forward to. And I realized that I felt just the same way before I came to YouTube. I just felt like everything fun, you know, choosing my maid, having babies, growing them up, seeing them get married, except for one of my sons who's not married yet. But most of the fun stuff was behind me, I felt. And then I came to YouTube and I realized the good stuff is all just in front of me. And the good stuff is all of you being here. It's this wonderful community that we're creating together growing up together, experiencing the second half together, using the stuff that we learned in the first half to create a better second half. And I could not be here without all of you. And I'm just so grateful for that. I truly am blessed. And so are you. Take care. See you next time.